yeah, so the botting problem's not great, but ultimately it's not like it's deteriorating the game that much. And I also just, after talking to Matt K on the cast, I just can't even, I don't have enough brain power now to just get mad about bots because it's just not worth it. It's like, I, I, I have no power over any of this. There's probably like a lot more that goes on behind the scenes too that like we just don't know because like i work in the games industry too Mm. um yeah i mean my game specifically we don't necessarily have like an anti-cheat um team but i imagine that like if there is something that they could do that's like beneficial to the players and them like they would do it but i think anti-cheat have their own things going on so totally yeah and i have (laughs) no idea what's actually happening i mean according to the data they presented like there's Tens of thousands of bots being banned every single mm-hmm. like week, which yeah. is nuts. I believe that. Yeah, no, I actually probably believe that too. Like, I don't see why they would lie about that. Just that sounds unnecessary. Sometimes I don't think I have a full grasp of how massive this game is and how yeah. <laughs> how many problems they need to solve. But yeah. So so what do you do uh, in the games industry? Can you can you tell us about that? Yeah, I um I'm a community manager for I work in mobile gaming. Um. So yeah, I'm a community manager. I do a lot of like what Aiza does for RuneScape for mm. my game. So I can kind of relate to some of their problems sometimes and like understand from like more of an insider perspective. It's like a music mobile rhythm game. Okay. My, yeah, my it's kind of game. Awesome. That's my kind of game. Yeah, I've always I mean, been rhythm so based. Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I, I had like crazy obsessions with Guitar Hero. I, I play that game, like, I swear to God, like four years straight i mean just like that's all i focused on it was just like i'd come back from school and i played guitar hero guitar hero is such a good game it was so fun donkey conga was this game where you play with bongos it was like a bongo controller what yeah so you have you have this there let me just show you what it looks like but this was like my first real introduction to uh donkey conga oh god i just googled it <laughs> yeah are you googling it i'll just show it on yeah i'll show it on yeah, yeah. to everybody else on youtube yeah so it's like you have these bongo controllers and so what you would do it was only um there was four different like i guess rhythm attacks you would need to do so it was left right together and then you could also clap and there was a microphone in the middle that would hear your claps <laughs> but the you know how like the Wii. i don't know if you ever had a Wii where yeah yeah you, i did like when you're playing wii tennis it's just like it, no, nobody's actually swinging people are just like doing the little <laughs> you know like jitter with the oh, remote. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so the clapping wasn't even like nobody ever if you were good at donkey Kong, you didn't clap you would just tap the sides of it and that would register like a loud noise inside the controller that would register as a clap anyway yeah i got i got pretty good at donkey Kong. it was all like the cover song so every single song you played just sounded like way worse than the originals and they were only like half the song for some reason <laughs> so that was annoying but um it was really fun and then i moved on to guitar hero so always been this been, this yeah. donkey conga game looks like it's like really clunky <laughs> oh it was horrible it was like <laughs> I mean that that was basically a mobile game on a console. It was yeah. It was bad. I don't know if I ever played this. I I want to say it looks familiar, but it's Nintendo, so I, a lot of things look familiar. But yeah, it looks really clunky. <laughs> I want to play it. Yeah, I'm yeah. interested. It has my attention. It's, I feel like I need to go and investigate. You need you need to play it. Oh, the Is bon- this playable? Like, oh, uh, guess... you could probably just I don't know if you have like Craigslist some some sort of I, thing where you just buy new stuff <laughs> but i'll be honest if you buy a donkey conga controller like a bongo set it's probably broken <laughs> those yeah. things are really cheap yeah yeah so, i can't Im- like i said it, it looks super clunky so i can't imagine the equipment was like anything to write home about you know funny story though like we we had like three bongo sets or something one of them completely broke and then we had one that was like half broken so whenever you would do a duel with somebody like somebody's just getting fucked over completely because like one of their bongo pads like just doesn't work you would have to literally slam it i mean you would have to put some force into it so so is it like a multiplayer game yeah it could, people mm-hmm. it would be multiplayer like here's a picture oh yeah i see like the lanes yeah you get a bunch of different lanes that you know what was really annoying though if somebody had a good combo going what you would do is you would clap and it would clap for everybody 
because, <laughs> because the microphone picks up all clapping. So you would just mess up people's combos by just clapping repeatedly. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it was it was aggressive. Yeah, so how was so I can't imagine that mobile game has anywhere near of a community as like OSRS. But um I mean different, right? Cuz you know old school is very much was a browser game, but now it's, you know, most people play on the computer. But yeah, we're just mobile, so it's like completely different audience. Um, but yeah, it's quite popular. Um, I think there's like 200,000 people in the oh. Discord or something. Oh, jeez. Um, it's a lot of friends, but... What are like the pros and cons of the OSRS community in comparison? Like, is do, are, do we have it good where we're at? Like, now that you can see another side or like a, another games community? I think the community I have are pretty awesome to be, to be honest but then like when i think about old school and like our community there like i have a very like shielded view on our community because a lot of the people i interact with are like people on twitch or like people in my clan and that's like a very small selection of the player base like a lot of my friends and people i interact with are like end game players but the majority of the old school user base are like super casual right like there's so many casual people that we have no idea about that i don't know like jimmy that plays like two hours a week or something yeah. <laughs> um but i stay like so far away from like the reddit and like the official discord um <laughs> primarily just because i read a lot of like similar stuff in like my day to day yeah that i just don't want to like read about it in like other places but yeah i would say like my view on like old school community is like very different to like my day-to-day -day, like when you actually work on a game if that makes sense that probably gives you a lot of empathy like you said earlier like for the position that Ayiza and light yeah. hold where yeah just, definitely they, they are not just look like, and because i get really jaded i try to understand how jaded i am with this game because i am just completely entrenched in kind of more higher level players and mindsets for them i mean they have to look at the entire game and so yeah we forget that i forget that i think it's just all about perspective really is like you know what you know right because you mm -hmm. know what you're exposed to but like even like light and aiza and you know all the other community managers like they i imagine like they each focus on like a specific part of the community um and they're like professionals in their own right but yeah like coming from like a cm perspective like there is so much you need to think about and like so much you need to consider that it's not always like something that would be straightforward or like the obvious option to you is like something that we're not even thinking about kind of thing mm -hmm. so yeah i have a lot of empathy for the team um and a lot of appreciation as well we have it really good and we also have like a polling system and just community engagement with everything that comes out even yeah. Even the things that aren't polled, they will still take our feedback and literally value it above their own. And they will make changes according to that, which is just amazing. I do think the poll system is a little bit flawed. I think, I mean, there's always room for improvement in like everything we do, but mm -hmm. I think that's flawed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, people like Aiza, like he's somebody that has like kind of inspired me to be like a better CM. Um, and I take a lot of inspiration from him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the community team do a pretty good job of like, especially in like recent years, I feel like it's gotten a lot better. Um, but in just like updating us on things and, you know, asking for our feedback and opinion and yeah, I appreciate it. I hope other people do too. What, what would you suggest for like an improved polling or what do you think is flawed about it? There are some things that are polled that are just like, I don't necessarily think needs to go through like a polling system like if jagex thinks that there is something that is good for the game that they like wholeheartedly believing as a team mm -hmm. i don't think they need to run everything yeah. by us i don't have an example to give you off the top of my head but... there's there's plenty of examples running through my yeah. mind where it's just like this is okay. so stupid to poll like and, and especially the things where it's so obvious that this needs to be changed that like anybody that would vote no to this is clearly just trolling or can entirely mis misinformed. So. I think they moved it to 70%, right? It's a pass. Yeah. I, yeah. And like, I know so many people that just like blindly click. <laughs> they don't, they don't read, they don't care. Um, and 70% isn't that high. So. Yeah, no, I mean, we... Uh, 
because we just have so many different competing views with the game. Most people would probably throw a player like me into like the more purest threshold of like, oh, this guy is going to vote no to things. Um, I Compared to the larger player base, maybe I'm like kind of in there, but I am very liberal with like my thoughts on this game. Like I, I want updates all the time. I want quality yeah. of life. I want all that. And But there are those players that are super, super stern on like, no, do not make any changes unless absolutely necessary. Like this game's got to stay as charming and clunky as it can. And the more we change it, the more it's just going to turn into like some mush of just p people's fear really is like, w like the purest's fear is that this game is going to turn into like RS3 basically where like everything becomes just really standardized and just, I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely a couple of people that I feel like are like, we absolutely cannot kind of, you know, go into RS3 territory. Um, but then I think there's a lot of people that are like hard stuck in like, 2014. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, obviously when old school was released again, like it's had its fair share of updates and it's not what it was when it was released originally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we're not super, super old school anymore. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some people that are not wanting updates, which is fine, you know, but yeah, yeah I'm I, somebody I, that likes seeing new stuff. I also try to respect their views as well because like, it's okay to not to be a person that opposes most updates simply because your whole view on it is you just want minimal updates. Like you like the game yeah. as is. That's fine too. Like I love the game as it was, but like I am somebody who just can appreciate like change with new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and like the old school team are huge. So <laughs> they're going to have ideas on like things that they want to do that they think improves the game. So I'm always interested to hear those kind of things. But yeah. Yeah, some players not, not wanting to kind of move on from like what old school originally was. But I think that's fine too. Yeah, it's fine to... Well, the, the funny thing is, is that most purists that are super against any update actually aren't. Like they'll they'll say they are, but they, they actually have had some updates that they've really, really loved. But because they hold on to their purist view so strongly, they have to deceive themselves into thinking it's just like... It's like the idea of it, right? It's like the idea, like they need to hold on to this kind of like virtue of like, I've always been against all updates and all updates are like not good for the game. But ultimately when you actually, if you were to actually prod them enough, you would see that there's actually been a lot of updates that they love participating in and they love like a lot of new skilling methods that have emerged and stuff because mm -hmm. of these updates that they just wouldn't have been able to enjoy otherwise. So it's kind of, I feel like no matter what the way, I'm obviously the way forward is better updates, more more updates in general, but they have to be like quality. Yeah, not just churning out kind of anything. Yeah. And that's why I do think that the polling system is good for that because there's been a few things in the past where like the community of Hops have absolutely just been like, mm -mm, like no thanks. Um, I think that's good, but when there's something that, like I said, you know, the company feels is a good thing and is necessary, I don't feel like those kind of things need to be ran by us. Like, let us know in like a blog and stuff, but I don't know if we need to like vote on everything. I want to hear your thoughts on this because, okay. like, I've I've definitely heard J mods wish, like, I've had them on the cast, and they're like, man, if if only we didn't have to go through all this bureaucracy of like going getting through the players and po like polling all these things just to come up with an update that we know is going to be awesome if we didn't have to go through all that like we could get updates out so much faster and so much and add literally add more quality into it because we'd have more time for that what would you say well this is something i brought up i'll just get your opinion on this like as i was just thinking like what if there was something where you don't pull what it is but you pull a poll <laughs> to allow yourselves to have an unpolled update so basically it would be a poll of like hey we want to come up with something that's unpolled will you allow us to do this and we have to pull if it's 70 percent yes or not you know so so it's something we're like a, a significant no i get the concept yeah yeah a significant piece of content would come out but we would have no idea what it is but we would pull to even have that be a thing like what would you think i don't like it <laughs> like if they were like hey yeah. Do you give us permission to do this potentially like unhinged thing? It's yeah. like at that point they're holding us accountable. We've given them permission. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want well, that. It, it wouldn't. I mean, we would. We they we would give them one chance. It would be a smaller project. We're like, okay, hey, we're giving you a test run because if this is so unhinged that it's just unbearable, like you've messed up. We're never giving you this again. 
the tables of town, like the community actually own Jagex yeah. and everything they do. <laughs> I just think there are amazing things. And one of the things that um, I don't know how big of a portion of a player base uh, that thinks this is, but I, I would personally like an update where all of a sudden one week an update drops and we have no idea what it is and it just comes into the game we have no idea what the uniques and what if it's a boss what if it's like a, a quest into a boss with some new uniques that we have no idea about we don't know any of the draw price we don't know anything that would be so exciting like that imagine would, like yeah. I, I have a good example of all this like you know when um desert desert treasure 2 was released and then um the awakened bosses came out a few days later mm -hmm. i thought it'd be so cool if like they dropped et2 we got off one new bosses and then they didn't have to tell us that like blorva was a thing or awakened bosses were a thing like because there was that in-game like message where it was like the, the ground shook or something i can't remember exactly what it was mm. but there was like something that happened in game when the update hit and i just think that would be so cool if like we didn't know about that beforehand and it's just like okay what is this i'm like yes what the hell do we do